Hi everyone, welcome to Learn to Fly Melbourne. I'm one of the instructors here and my name is Clement. Today, we are going to talk about navigation. In the private pilot license syllabus, navigation is one of the core flight sequence of the PPL course. And that's the reason why we have a series of videos just about how to navigate an aircraft from point A to point B. There are a lot of materials to go through before we commence a navigation exercise. As you can see on the table here, there are a lot of different maps that we are required to be using during our navigation exercise around Melbourne area. You can see the aviation ruler, navigation protractor, and the flight computer. They are specifically made for aviation. We will then have a look into how to interpret weather forecasts in aviation. For example, like the GAF, graphical area forecast, or the TAF, terminal aerodrome forecast, we are going to assess the weather forecast to ensure that the weather is safe enough for us to conduct the flight. We will then have a look into the URSA to read up on the inbound and outbound procedure of the airport that we are intended to visit. Not only that, but also the airport, radio frequency, circuit altitude, and overfly height. We have plenty of charts here, so we'll go through them one by one. VTC is also known as the Visual Terminal Chart. It has the largest scale, so it is going to show the most detailed but less area of coverage. So VTC is more suitable for departing and arriving into metropolitan airports. And that is also why only major cities have VTC coverage, such as Melbourne, Sydney or Brisbane. Also it shows the radio frequency and airspace boundaries. If you have found any symbols that you are unfamiliar with, you can refer to the legend page of the map. VNC, Visual Navigation Chart, has half the scale of the VTC. It covers more area, therefore it can be more suitable for travelling long distance such as a navigation exercise. Fun fact, the coverage of VNC is less than 10% of the entirety of Australia. You can see that it shows airspace boundaries, there are different airspaces such as Class Alpha, Class Charlie, also Marabin's airspace Class Delta. It also shows the airspace upper and lower limit and the different airport frequencies. Because VNC shows more area, it can be better to see large land features such as terrain, big quarry and big township. WAC, the World Aeronautical Charts. It has a smaller scale compared to the previous two charts which allows it to cover the most distance and area with less definition. If you are able to put all the WACs together, you will be able to cover the entire continent of Australia. Whenever we are flying outside of the area of VTC and VNC, we will need to use the WAC to navigate. After opening up the WAC chart, you can see how much area and terrain it covers. It particularly has great ability to visualize terrain. You can see the grey dividing range along here is being painted on different shades of brown to indicate the height of the terrain. The darker brown shows the higher ground, and the lighter brown or even blue shows the shallower terrain or closer to sea level. You will be able to see the northeast of Melbourne, there are heaps of high terrain, and Melbourne itself is more like a basin as it is being portrayed with more white colour. The yellow area indicates township, because that is how it looks at night. The purple circle are the different airports or airstrips. The blue area is the ocean. Where the white meets the blue is Melbourne's coastline. There are some other features as well, such as the windmills, quarries, those red lines are the different roads, those yellow lines are the highways, and if you are not sure of some of the symbols, please refer to the legend section which is located at the bottom of the map. It would cover everything that you need to know. One of the biggest difference between WAC and the other two charts is that WAC has no airspace frequencies or boundaries. When operating only on the WAC chart, we'll need to use the ERC chart to identify airspace boundaries and frequency. The PCA chart, also known as the Planning Chart Australia. This chart shows all of the airport around Australia and the different boundaries. It also allows us to interpret the weather, especially useful for determining area kilometers along the route. After obtaining all the information that we required for the navigation exercise, we can now put everything together on our flight plan sheet. On the flight plan sheet, there are different columns that we are going to go through together. POSN is position. This column is for different waypoints along the route. L-South, lowest safe altitude. 
This is more for Knight VFI and IFR flying, so we can just leave it blank for today's operation. Alt is altitude, which is our planned cruising altitude. Test is true airspeed. If we're flying the Diamond DA40, our planned true airspeed is 120 knots. TR is track. We will be using a protractor to measure the track on our route. W slash V is wind direction and velocity. It means the wind direction and wind speed. HDG is heading which is the aircraft's heading. Whenever there is presence of crosswind, the heading will be different from the track. GS is ground speed, which is the speed of the aircraft over ground after considering the wind. DIST is distance, which is the distance between waypoints. ETI is the estimated time of interval, which is the approximate time required to travel between waypoints. PLN EST is planned estimate. RAV EST1, and 2 is revised estimate 1 and 2. ATD is actual time of departure. ATA is actual time of arrival. REV fuel mar is revised fuel margin. Close to the bottom of the flight plan sheet is the section of fuel log, which shows how much fuel in minute in the left and right tank. On the right side of the fuel plan sheet is the arrival data card. It has space to fill in different details of the airport that we'll be visiting, such as the frequency, its frequency, elevation, circuit height, and overfly height. Also, there is some space for us to draw the airport layout if preferred, and at the bottom is a fuel calculation plan. We'll be covering this section in the later part of the series. After all the boxes has been filled out, we should be able to calculate the flight time of today's flight and use the fuel calculation plan to determine if the fuel we carry on board is sufficient. When receiving a navigation route, the first step is to plot it out on the map. Assuming the route of the day is Morabin to Latrobe Valley to Leangatha and back to Morabin, firstly, locate those airport on the map. If you are unable to locate them, look them up on the URSA and look for the latitude and longitude and you should be able to locate them by plotting them on the map. When plotting the route on the map, we will start with the smallest scaled map, which is the WAC, then move on to the VNC, lastly the VTC. After locating all of the airports, connect all of the airports with straight lines, and be aware, you gotta connect it from the center of the purple circle. After connecting all of the airports together, I found out a small issue. When flying from Lingatha to Morabin, the planned route will take us right through Turidan Airport. However, overflying Turidan is not recommended as it could be very busy at times, and that's why I would recommend going from Lingatha and track directly to Karam, which is one of the Morabin's inbound points, to avoid flying over Turidan. Just a quick tip, use pencil to allow easy correction on the map. After completed plotting the lines on the WAC, proceed to do the same on VNC and VTT. While we're drawing the line on the map, we can also at the same time start filling out the flight plan sheet. The first position of our departure point is YMMB. The second waypoint is YLTV. The third waypoint is YLEG. The fourth waypoint is CARR, Karam. And the fifth point is back at Merevin. As we'll be conducting a full stop landing in Latrobe Valley. We will need to leave two lines below Latrobe Valley and rewrite Latrobe again to show that we are conducting a full stop landing in Latrobe Valley. After completing drawing the lines on the map, it's now time to measure with ruler and protractor of the distance and bearings of each leg of our navigation exercise. Firstly, let's measure the distance from Rabin to Latrobe Valley Airport. Be aware that the ruler has different scaling for different maps. As we are using the VNC, we'll be using the middle scale for that. Based on my measurement, Morabin to Latrobe Valley is 66 nautical miles. I'll put that figure under the distance column. We'll now use the protractor to obtain the track. When using the protractor, we have to ensure that the side of the protractor and the grid lines on the map are parallel. I've measured 102 degrees of the protractor. However, we cannot put 102 degree down on the track because what the map has shown us is true north, but not magnetic north. The difference between the two is the magnetic variation. So we'll have to work that out by looking for those purple lines that cut right through our flight path with 12 degrees east on the side of it. 
What that means is we have to deduct 12 degrees of 102 that we have measured. So the actual track that we will be flying will be 090 degrees. If the magnetic variation is west, it means that we now have to add that variation on top of the track that we have measured on the map. Now we can put 090 degrees down and that is how we complete one leg. Now I will quickly finish the rest of the flight plan. And after obtaining the distance of all the legs, we add them all up and put it at the top total distance. On the VTC or the VNC, it shows the different airspace boundaries. What may affect us is the green boundaries, which indicate different sectors of Melbourne Centre airspace. There are different frequencies in different sectors of Melbourne airspace. To remind ourselves to change frequencies, I would strongly advise leaving a note on the given space down below on the flight plan sheet. The Melbourne Centre frequency that wraps around Moorabbin and Melbourne is 135.7. If we look along the route, we'll be cutting across this Melbourne Centre at this point, which is where Cadinia Reservoir will be a beam us to our left. We'll then require to switch frequency to 123.35. When we reach the second green line, we'll then need to switch frequency for the second time. We'll be a beam Yerrigon Township, and the frequency would be 124.0, which is still Melbourne Centre. From Latrobe Valley to Leangatha, switch frequency to 123.35 when crossing the green line. This happened when we passed the township of Murbu North. From Leongatha back to Karam, when passing Turidan Township, switch frequency back to 135.7. After finishing measuring the track and distance on the map, we can now proceed to draw the 10 mile marker. Draw a line every 10 miles along the track from the start of each leg. On each side of the track, extend a 10 mile marker for 5 miles. Then on each 10 mile marker, write down the number of miles. The first marker being 10 miles, the second being 20, and so on, until the entire route is completed. We can also mark the location of the 10 mile inbound core, which is 10 mile out from arrival, to remind us to broadcast our intention prior to arrival. After that, we'll be drawing the halfway assessment point. Halfway assessment point is particularly useful for long distance between waypoints. For example, from Moorabbin to Latrobe Valley, it is 66 miles. So at 33 mile, mark the halfway point. After completing the above, on our flight plan sheet, we should have filled out the position, track in magnetic heading and distance. The next step of the preparation is to assess the weather conditions to determine the cruising altitude. And that is it for today guys. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to our Learn to Fly YouTube channel and give us a like. Also, don't forget to follow us on Facebook or Instagram. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.